Hi there, Wally Wingard here, creep aider of the 13 story series Donnie Druthers Christoween Capers. I hope you're enjoying hearing these stories during the 13 weeks of Christoween. It's week five, and here's the fifth chapter. After befriending the creature of the deep and learning about his strange impediment, Donnie has to wrestle with the concept of sacrifice in order to help his friend conquer his odd problem. This is Donnie Druthers Christoween Capers Story 5 Creature Teacher. Have fun! This story starts in a quaint little eatery. Donnie was so hungry he was feeling quite teetery. While looking through the menu to find the day's feature, he glanced to his right and saw a large greenish creature. Donnie recognized him instantly as the creature of the deep, a visage that haunted most kids in their sleep. Excited to meet him, but keeping his cool, he approached him politely. He's nobody's fool. Big fan of your work, Donnie said confidently. It looks as if you're hungry too, evidently. I think I can guess what you're having to eat, so order away. Your sushi's my treat. Creature turned to Donnie, apologetic and kind. He said, sushi's not exactly what I had in mind. Donnie thought it odd Creature didn't want seafood. How could he turn down Donnie's offer of free food? He hoped that his gesture wasn't forward or crude, so he thought a funny joke might help lighten the mood. I'm on the seafood diet, man, you simply can't beat it. Donnie giggled out loud. If I see food, I eat it. But Creature didn't laugh. In fact, he seemed sad. Not angry or mad, but sad, just a tad. He creeped closer to Creature so a hand he might lend. Donnie said, Sorry, friend, I didn't mean to offend. Creature turned to Donnie and said, Not to fret. I've already picked out the food that I'll get. I'm sorry we got off on such a bad footing, but the truth of it is, I can only eat pudding. Pudding? Donnie asked in a tone rather quizzically. Creature said, Yes, I can handle that physically. I love food of the sea, but I have a bad allergy. It's assumed it's my food, but it's a big fallacy. Creature of the deep can't eat what he pleases. If he has any seafood, he breaks out and sneezes. No fish sticks, no tuna, no crab legs, no lobster. It's a story so sad it could make grown men sobster. I'm sorry to hear that your choices are limited. No wonder you seem so shy and inhibited. But I've an idea that could give you a reason to believe in a cure. It's the Christoween season. Creature cocked his head in a curious fashion. To be able to eat what he wants is his passion. Could this young lad be the key to his wishes? To finally eat octopus, seals, eels, and fishes? He reached out to Donnie with a web-fingered hand. Put her there, pal. You're a pleasant young man. Donnie shook Creature's claw with much heartfelt vigor. I've seen pictures of you, but in person you're bigger. They both paid their checks, then took off down the street. You spoke of a cure that might help me to eat all the things that I like. Your idea sounds sweet. I really believe it was destined we meet. Donnie nodded his head. On that they agreed. Creature had an interesting problem indeed. You spoke of a season you called Christoween. Please tell me about it. Explain what you mean. He described Christoween. He explained all the reasoning. Creature got so excited he found it all pleasing. Could Christoween magic really help in my cause? How soon can we contact... what's his name? Santa Claus? Correct, creature friend. No cause to be glum. Santa owes me a favor, Donnie said with a plum. I once helped him out with the reindeer situation and got it all fixed before he went on vacation. He keeps every letter I send, doesn't toss him. I just know that he'll help. He's really quite awesome. Creature started salivating, couldn't wait to be fed, while visions of echinoderms danced in his head. They rushed to his room, sat down, wrote a note. They sent it by airplane, they sent it by boat. It was carried by pigeons, an eagle, a goat who walked it across a mysterious moat. They got further acquainted while awaiting a reply. This creature of the deep is a really nice guy. He said he's been living for thousands of years. Now the last of his kind, he's all out of peers. He just swims around lazily in his life oceanic. Not at all like the surface folks, frantic and manic. Donnie said life up here can really be taxing, but the life you describe sounds serene and relaxing. Creature helped Donnie to hang decorations, all the while filled with Christoween expectations. They hung up the mistletoe, put popcorn on a string, but only unpopped kernels. Tis a curious thing. They waited and waited for Santa's reply, but it didn't come quickly. They watched the time fly. Creature said sadly, maybe Santa won't help. I won't get to eat tasty krill or green kelp. Donnie said, Creature friend, don't get down in the gills. Santa's great, just you wait. Every wish he fulfills. Creature sighed slightly sad with a low liquid gurgle, but then a loud bang. Was the house being burgled? Creature stood to defend, bared his teeth and his claws, but then they saw something that gave them both pause. They smiled and relaxed when they saw the bang's cause, because there in the doorway stood old Santa Claus. 
I got your note, Donny, Santa started to say. I didn't delay and I came right away. And the fact of the matter is I traveled all day. I've considered your problem and I know a way. Well, Donnie and Creature danced a jig at the news. After all, Creature's green. He shouldn't have the blues. Santa interrupted. He had more news to bring. He said, Sorry, boys. There's just one little thing. They stopped celebrating, got ready to listen. Every minor detail they didn't want to be missing. There's just one small rule that needs to be heeded. For the wish to come true, there's a sacrifice needed. Their faces got serious in a state of rapt attention. They wanted to hear what Santa had to mention. Sacrifice? Donnie asked, not completely understanding. Can you elaborate exactly what the wish is demanding? Santa sat down to explain how it works. This Christoween magic does come with its quirks. I can help your friend eat all the food he desires. But a sacrifice from Donnie is what it requires. Just what sort of sacrifice does it entail? Do I have to wash dishes or spend time in jail? <laughs> Santa laughed so hard, his belly started jiggling. And this set off Donnie and Creature to giggling. Santa laughed heartily. There's no jail or no dishes. But to help Creature out, you must give up your wishes. No Christoween presents for you, Donnie dear. Your Christoween season will be giftless this year. No Christoween gifts, Donnie shouted with horror. I won't get a thing. I'll be all for the poor. But Donnie shot a look at his sad green sea friend. Well, Creature said, I guess this is the end. I'd love to eat shrimp and tuna and shellfish. But I'm afraid that my wish has become much too much selfish. I guess I'll return to the green briny foam. Thanks anyway, Donny. I'm gonna go home. Twas a pause in the room, and all three were quiet. Would Donny refuse? Santa just wouldn't buy it. Then Donny said quietly, Man, you just gotta try it. Santa, please put my friend on a strict seafood diet. Santa tossed Creature some Christoween magic. He fixed a big problem that once was so tragic. Creature was ecstatic. It's been so nice to meet you. I now can eat all sorts of slimy sea creatures. Thanks, Santa. I'm starving for grouper and prawn. But when he turned to thank Santa, old Santa was gone. Donnie hugged Creature, very happy for his cure. Creature said, Donnie, your heart is so pure. Walk with me, talk with me back to the sea. You've been so generous. I've a gift for thee. They both walked together to the ocean's deep brine, but his selfless act weighed down Donnie's mind. This meant a whole year of no Christoween gifts. The more Donnie thought, the more he got miffed. He started to think that his choice he regretted. No Christoween skulls or snakes to be petted. He gave his friend his wishes. Oh, why did he? Why? And worst of all now, he must tell him goodbye. Maybe he'll listen if he begs him to stay. Oh, rats, this has been a really horrible day. They got to the beach to the ocean's green brine. Creature said, My friend Donnie, you're much too much kind. You've helped make my culinary dream to come true. And now, I'd just love to do something for you. Creature exhaled and blew out a bubble. An enormous -y thing the size of the Hubble. Get inside right away. Hurry up on the double. Let's go for a swim. You can breathe without trouble. Without a delay, he jumped into the sphere. Donnie was amazed. I can breathe in here. They rolled to the ocean and dove under sea. Donnie said, can this really be happening to me? Yes, Creature said, it's my gift to you. You've been so very kind, it's the least I could do. Together they swam, taking in all the sights. Creature grabbed kelp, started taking some bites. A stingray swam by, started waving his stinger. They thought they saw jaws, or at least a dead ringer. He saw colorful fishes, undersea vegetation. Donnie petted a whale without hesitation. Man, what a day with his undersea buddy. The whole circumstances were really quite nutty. Donnie thinks of that day with fond recollection, seeing all that he saw, oceanic perfection. To commemorate that happy experience aquatical, he sat down, created a thing very nautical. He found some green fabric, some thread, and some clippers, and created a stocking, just like Creature's flippers. So every time Krista Ween time comes around, he'll think of his buddy, who took him right down to the depths of the ocean, neath the watery surface, and helped him to realize a much higher purpose. <laughs>